Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 23 of Thick and Thin with LB Duty. And apparently, Hitman, he won't go away. He won't go away. <laughs> it's getting ridiculous. Um, Thick and Thin is the show where we talk about things on the internet that have to do with gaming. Sometimes they matter, sometimes they don't. Today's topic. What is today's topic? Oh, yeah. Esports. Is it going anywhere? What's the big deal? Do we care? But uh, before we get to that, my lovely co host. The man with the plan, Mr. LBSUTK. Say what's up. What's up? Aww. <laughs> and I'm extreme! <laughs> yes, you... I got you... on the glasses today for <laughs> eSports. Wow. Extreme. Does that, that improves your performance is what you're telling me. It, it does. Makes me more extreme than <laughs> extreme can be. Wow. And also wearing the gunners. In the, ah, gunner, yes. in the gunner's seat. Hitman. What's going on, buddy? What's going on, guys? What's going on? You got the gunners on. You're good to yes, go. Yes, this is officially LB's idea. Yeah. I can't. I have He's no gunners. He's taking full credit for this. We got to get, the, we gotta get um, Midnight on to talk about yep. gunners and then have her give me a pair so that I look cool. Tank says I need to put on my Astros. I'm poor. Now Astros I too? Oh, are you extreme? Let me see how extreme. Oh, my God. <laughs> Those I'm Astros. Just, I, have these I am completely extreme now, according to Tank. It seriously, fe I feel on. like those it, Astros barely game. fit your enormous head. <laughs> <laughs> like, those Astros are struggling for air. No, I feel bad for the Astros. Right. They're doing all right. <laughs> are they doing all right? Holding on for dear life. I love that you have the Astros on with the mic, plus you're using another <laughs> mic. <laughs> And you're using the, the earphones. Yeah, your shit is fucking dope. I, I need more than simulated 5.1. I need wow. 5.1 point stereo. 3.2? Yeah, that's so what, what, uh, what model are, are those, those glasses? Which, which ones are those? They are the... Uh, hmm. They are the... Know. Hold on. The phenoms. The phenoms. Yes, because I am a phenom. Wow. <coughs> wow. That's right. And what, which ones? Are your, which ones are yours? Hit. What do you got on? My mine are the uh, the legacies. Those are dope. They're the first uh, first ones that came out with one of the first ones. Those those are the top guns. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go hunt some shit after yeah. this. <laughs> which ones, Maverick? Uh, out of you two, I don't even know. You guys are good to go. Oh, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. I'll, be, I'll be goose. It's cool. I got no problems with that. Uh, anyway, before we start the show, um, one of our fellow tooled players, Mr. Hop, was kind enough to pass me this info that I really honestly had no idea about. Um, again, if you watched last week and our awesomeness that is every gaming company that wants to name their shit like some fucked up name you can't even pronounce, well, this company's done it again. Um, it's called I Iowa, <laughs> Iowa, Iowa, oh, yeah. Iowa. Can I just call it Iowa like the state? No. The Hawkeyes? No. That's, no? that's really. That's I really can't bad. do that. It's not really Iowa. Uh, Iowa. I don't know. Anyway, it's a new kind of video game console, and I kind of wanted to give it a. The reason I wanted to give it this shout out is because if you remember a couple, I want to say it was like two months ago, maybe three months ago, when we were talking about what we wanted out of E3. Um, I was talking about the Steam Box. And this idea that you'd have a console that was made by Steam, it'd be open platform because it's PC based, you'd have a controller and it was all done by Valve. Um, this comes out and this is really that exact idea when you think about it. Obviously, it's not Steam. Um, it's a completely independent company, co totally backed. Well, they have their own funding, but they're backing a lot of it on uh, Kickstarter, which I think is where everything. I mean, I might even like kickstart my next lunch tomorrow. Seems like you don't have to pay for anything anymore. Do a Kickstarter for it. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, I'm hungry. I need lunch. Yeah. I'm gonna go kickstart a lunch. So anyway, they did a Kickstarter. Um, they've already got 1.4 million, which is pretty crazy, and they still have 30 days to go. Uh, their initial goal was 950 thousand, and so what they're gonna do with this money is help with the development of the platform. They've got a prototype. They've got the guys that did the uh, hundred dollar laptop. I don't know if you guys remember that. It was like. Maybe two years yep. ago. Yeah. Yep. They got those guys to come in, did a little bit of the uh, the design work, the UI work, and how it actually 
you know, the industrial design stuff, the controller and that. Looks pretty good. Basically, it's an open platform. Any developer who wants to write for it can write for it. They're kind of trying to do this whole, like, you don't need to have a dev kit. You don't need to know, buddy, know somebody who knows somebody. Uh, they're going to have third-party apps from major developers on it. Plus, they're going to have these the indie apps that are coming in. And obviously, they're, they're trying to work with all developers to make it as open source as humanly possible. So anyway, I thought it was really interesting because it goes along with my the whole thing that I was talking about before, which is the Steam box, which is, you know, could a console come along that can bridge the gap between the console market and the PC market uh, and the mobile market? And uh, these guys seem to kind of get that. I don't know. I guess my question is, are you guys interested in this? I mean, I know it's coming out of nowhere. It's not really a known company. Um, they say they've got you know, 40 plus years of uh, experience in, in the industry. So they know what they're doing, I suppose. But what do you guys think? Is this interest you at all? What do you think, LB? Zero fucks. Really? Well, I mean, okay. So they're coming out. It's Android platform, but what kind of games are you going to have? Yeah. You know? Am I going to get angry birds 24 seven? Is it going to be, you know, something a little bit more like that is it going to you know is it going to interest me i mean yeah they show a picture it shows there's minecraft there's dead trigger there's shadow gun samurai vengeance what the fuck are all those minecraft all right i've heard of minecraft everything else is zombie game eh. i mean it's a hundred bucks i mean i guess it has possibilities and, and could be kind of cool but I don't think I'm going to run out or do a Kickstarter just to get it. So you're not looking to uh, invest <laughs> in this uh, in this console. You're you're saying it's and I and I think I agree. I think ultimately it comes down to what games you know make it on there. If if you don't have games on there, you're not going to play it. That's pretty simple. Uh, but they're saying that they're going to get a a lot of the third party stuff. They're going to try to get the big name publishers to come onto the platform. Whether or not there's any reason they should be enticed to come on, I don't know. Um, but let's say I guess. They do get all these, you know, big name publishers. Hit, would that be something maybe you'd be interested in sort of checking out? Or is it just kind of a, I don't know, a nice idea? Yeah, it's a nice idea. I'm, I don't think I'm really interested in it. From what I, this is the first time I'm hearing about the story. And from what I've heard, it, yeah, it's, it hasn't interested me at all. Uh, the way I currently game and use PCs and everything, I, I like the setup that I have and I'm, it doesn't sound like a revolutionary new idea that hmm. would make me want to switch what I currently have set up. I mean, I guess it all comes down to who wants to, to get on board with this. Um, it's built on the Android uh, OS, so it's actually built on you know the same thing that everyone, like Google's using it for uh, a lot of their stuff that they've kind of interconnected with other game companies and stuff like that. You can kind of see Google in a weird way moving into the games market. Maybe not even on purpose uh, themselves, but their technologies are moving that way. That's pretty big, the platform itself being Android. That means it's extendable. That means people that you know have worked on Android before obviously can get involved in this and they'll have you know, some sort of a semblance of knowing what's going on when they're coding for it, which is cool. Um, they're talking about some big games coming towards. They haven't really announced anything in particular, but I guess if they do pick up Steam, pun intended... Um, they could actually maybe go somewhere with something like this. If you have a, if you have something that can really compete and you give developers a toolkit that's really easy to use that allows them to kind of develop rapidly uh, and without a lot of the, the pitfalls that kind of fall into Microsoft and Sony, which is, you know, $3,000 dev kits and um, just getting into that, your game published and stuff like that takes a lot. So getting rid of those pitfalls... You know, we maybe maybe the games will be you know cheesy at first, but you never know. I mean, a game like um, Angry Birds, yeah, man, that makes people rich nowadays. You know what I'm saying? So who knows? I don't know. You know so you're so you're saying no, LB. You're saying it's there's no no chance for you. Well, I, I don't want to buy a hundred dollar system to play Andrew, Angry Birds. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I okay. So if you get some big companies on board, still I'm, great. They're on board, but what are you going to show me? What game are you going to put out there that's like, oh, shit, I need to go buy this? So you're saying like because there's no first <laughs> like first party, because I don't think they're doing the development. There's no first party stuff. It's not something you, you'd be interested in. Or But what if you get, you know, Call of Duties and all these other third party types of apps on there? Is it does it sort of then become worth the money? 
uh, assuming that they're going to have a live type service and, you know, networking and all these other things, which they would because it's, it's, ba it's, it's a PC, right? Um, it's based on Android. Yeah. So they could probably do that. Um, so if they do that, are you, are you, do you then become interested in it or is it just still not enough for you? Uh, at that point, it, yeah, it might be something I would look into, but even still, it's going to have to be a platform where my friends are playing on. Yeah. And if, you know, I know three people playing on it. No. <laughs> yeah. I'm right. still not going to go out and get it. I mean, I, I'm not trying to, to shit on their idea or anything. It's great. I think more competition in the market is always good. It's just going to push everyone else to make better crap. Right. I just hope that they have decent enough games to pull enough people to do it. And yeah, if you say if, if they hook up to Steam, instead of Steam creating their own box, and maybe they'll go with these guys. I, I don't know. Maybe they'll be like, all right, put Steam on it. Well, that, that's pretty big, because yeah. then, you know, you get a lot of popular games on there that now you can play. Yeah. No, I mean, that's true, and I think, I think that's why the Steam box idea was such a great, you know, thing to kind of look forward to, and that everyone, everyone started talking about that. Because you have a pre- existing community of players um, and we're all on steam too i mean we don't necessarily play a lot of pc games together but i feel like if you're a gamer you're on steam in some way i don't you know even if you never play so if you can get steam onto that platform then you've got an injection of a huge community already available with networking tools that they've already um, come up with so yeah i don't know interesting idea i'm glad you brought it to, to the attention of us because it does it's i don't know it's something to maybe look out for clearly they've got the backers they've gotten way more than uh, they initially asked for they still got 30 days to go i mean you're talking about 1.5 million 30 days to go they only wanted only one they wanted 950 thousand. That's a lot of money um but they're getting more than they wanted so that's kind of telling. Obviously, there's a market for this because people are backing it. And that's the thing about Kickstarter is you can really get a feel for when a project is, you know, catching catching some steam and getting some people behind it because you can clearly see it by the numbers. And right now you got 1.5 million. That's pretty good. Um, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on it, I guess. We'll see how this goes. If Steam then comes out and says, hey, by the way, we've got our own, pretty much shuts this down, I think. <laughs> it's like, we got a box. It's uh, cheaper and it's better and it's made by Valve. Uh, no, but Valve did, and this is separate news, kind of piggybacking on top of this. One last thing before we go to our topic. Um, they announced their Greenlight project, which is kind of similar to this on a developer standpoint, not really hardware. But now they've announced what they're going to do is they're going to have sort of design by committee, which you guys can even comment on this to see if you think it's a smart move or not. What they're basically doing is anytime a developer wants to develop something for Steam, they would be the ones who would say, okay, we'll publish this or we won't. This is allowed on the Steam network or it isn't. Now what they've decided to do is say, okay, we're going to design by committee. You come up with a great idea for a game that you want to pitch, that you want everyone to check out. We'll put it out there. We'll sort of help you with the advertising. You got to get out there, tell your friends about it. People will vote on the game. If they like it, and you can get funding for it, then we'll publish the game. So it's literally designed by committee. If the fans think it's a great game, there's momentum for that game, they'll put the game out there. What do you, well, Hit, I'll go with you. What do you think about that type of uh, development? I mean, we're seeing a lot of this sort of, you know, new ways to try to come into the industry, and now Steam's kind of even getting bored on this. So what do you, what do you think about that? Is that is From that what you said, it, uh, it sounds interesting. It sounds fair it kind of weeds out the garbage games right um yeah no i like the idea it sounds yeah promising we might be able to actually get some new shit instead of the same old same old from the same developers i mean a lot easier to get the diamond diamond in the rough right now my concern when when i heard about this originally was and this is kind of the the problem with i think all social media and pretty much any site, like when you think of Dig or you think of Reddit or any of these sites where you upvote something or you vote for something, uh, the big problem with the system that I see right now is gaming. If you, and by gaming, I don't mean video games. I mean gaming the system. Um, if you get a lot of friends or if you have, you know, a friend of a friend or you're a popular dude, let's say, like me, and I can get a ton of people together to, and I have, maybe my game is shit, right? Maybe I have a game about unicorns that throw swords at each other. 
And I'm like, hey, you, you guys checked out Unicorns with Flaming Swords? I can't wait to get this game published. But you're all like, well, Jay's an idiot, but he's also super cool. So we're all going to go upvote his game and we're going to get it published on Steam. Now, that's the only problem that I can see right now with this new green light is that if you really want to or if you've got the poll or the Twitter numbers, it's really easy to get your game published because then it's, you know, it's like anything in politics. You know, you don't always vote for the smartest guy in the room. Sometimes you vote for the most popular guy in the room and that dude's a fucking idiot. Um, I mean, what do you think about that sort of thing, LB? Is that a little bit of a concern, uh, you think, overall? Or do you think, for whatever reason, human nature will come through and we'll all have the greatest games ever? Like, what do you think's really going to happen there? Oh, no. You're still going to get shit games. That's still going to happen. <laughs> but it... Is it that you're going to go out and buy every game that gets green lit? You know, just because it gets on Steam doesn't mean I'm going to buy it. That's true. Steam's co- games coming out on Steam all the time doesn't mean like, oh, new game, buy. Oh, new game, buy. Yeah. It's still got to have certain appeal. So, yeah, if you get the AOK, go ahead, put your game out there. We'll give it a shot. Fine. The market is still going to determine if your game is successful. That's true. So if a bit game... You know, word gets around just as fast as, you know, hey, I want to put a game up so it can be, you know, end up shitting the brick. So. No, that's really true. I mean, I guess the market will always, well, let's be honest, too, with the market. People constantly buy Call of Duty 3. The market has determined that that's a really popular game. But to be fair, it's kind of a shit game, too. Not shit game, but it's a game that's been rehashed so many times that we don't even need it anymore. And the market still, for whatever reason, responds almost unanimously that people still want more Call of Duty. So it's it's a fine line. I feel like sometimes you'll get a shit game, um, maybe through this through this process for you know popularity's sake. But at the same time, the game that gets the most views or gets the most downloads or is is purchased the most probably isn't necessarily the same game or the the best game either. Um, a lot of the games that I saw at E3 were these small game companies that were trying to get the word out, but they don't have the funding, they don't have the voice, and maybe they're not popular enough to get their name out there. So it's going to be really interesting to see what a platform like Greenlight can do. And obviously Greenlight, they're taking that same idea um, off of, I think it was, who 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 did that for the movies? You know, someone was doing a Greenlight project a long time ago, but they got that idea. Like HBO or something? Yeah, I think it was like HBO or one of them. They teamed up with some you know, super, super famous actor that I can't remember to do something just like that. So, so we'll see. Um, Steam generally is the one that will bring you games that you're never going to see because that's kind of, as Tank said in our chat, not really something you see on the console right now. They're just there to sort of churn out the Call of Duties and Halos and all those other things. Um, so you can definitely see some diamonds in the rough in the future. So we'll, we'll keep, keep an eye on that as well. Uh, moving on, the topic today which is Hitman's topic, believe it or not. He's bringing some topics to the, to the You're show. getting credit for this, eh? Yeah, All you right. are, dude. No, <laughs> and it's a good topic. Is uh, Basically, we've seen in the past, I don't know, I want to say two years, a real upswing to, to esports. Um, I think when Halo first came out and MLG first started getting rolling, obviously that's where MLG kind of got its start was with the Halo franchise. There was this big sort of, there was this time frame where I feel like MLG really got big. Not mainstream big, but they, you'd start to see them on, was it ESPN2? I think they got on at some point and yeah. they were, they were building. They were, they were, the momentum, the momentum was there. Um, and then what happened, I guess I, w- I would almost blame the franchise and I hate to do that, but I think Halo got a little stale and MLG faltered a little bit. At least I stopped watching it. I didn't have a reason to watch it anymore. I think a lot of people stopped tuning in. Um, but what we've seen in the last year or so is a pretty big resurgence in MLG, bigger than it's ever been. Maybe attributed to this exact thing we're doing right now, which is Twitch TV. Um, they certainly have got a lot more viewers this way, just kind of you know casually viewing a VOD or viewing something that's li- a stream- live uh, streaming, you know, gameplay from maybe not even necessarily MLG, but just pro gamers, you know, kind of getting out there. And we've seen a huge upswing. Um, It's kind of left Halo behind, which is interesting. Maybe we can talk a little bit about that. And Mm -hmm. we're seeing just general uh, esports kind of being a fairly popular thing again. So it's kind of, it's really interesting. And now America is kind of behind the curve on this. We're just learning about esports 
or really just embracing it, I think, as a society. Whereas if you go to Korea or you go to any of the others, other places, there's millions and millions of fans that watch this every day. These pro gamers make six figures and they're revered almost as an athlete would be uh, in the U.S., so do you guys think, I guess my big question is, do you guys think we can ever reach that level um, of fame and adoration and stuff in the U.S. with esports? And if you think so, um, how far away do you think we are? And I guess the hit you're the best for this since this is your baby. So, I mean, what do you think about that? Will we ever reach that level uh, of fame in esports or can we see, do you think it's going that direction or what do you think? Like to an like MLB or NHL kind of status? Yeah, close. I mean, that's, you know, I think that's fairly big, but close to that, you know, on TV weekly, let's say. Um, yeah, I think MLGs probably within the next two years, we're about two years away from MLG being on our TV. With the per- with CBS purchasing um, Twitch or MOG, whatever it was, the partnership they came up with, it- it's leading that way, and it's mainly because of StarCraft Two, and now League of Legends is taking o- is starting to gain steam, and uh, what's their third game? Um, I don't. I know League and and um, League of Legends and StarCraft. And StarCraft oh, and all the huge. fighting games. Oh, and then, yeah, um, fighting games are. They're starting games. to. Well, they're already pretty popular. Yeah. I read an article the other day that FPSs are have lost to fighters in competitive scene. And, uh, yeah, it's just... I, it, it, we're so close from MLG being on TV. I, I can see all the steps moving into that direction. What do you, what do you think, LB? Do you think we're, we're as close as Hit thinks we are or no? No, I, I don't. I mean, to be for your theory of to be on once a week consistently on a network channel like CBS, ESPN, or something like that, no way, because TV is driven by advertising. Mm-hmm. And unless you're going to get the advertisers to come in to replace whatever show it's going to replace, that same dollars or more, I don't think so. And I, 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 don't, I, think I don't see it being like a weekly show. I see it more like a... Uh like a golf tournament where it's on every like five, six weeks kind of thing uh, or whenever they have an event. But I, I can definitely see their events being on television and it's only because of Starcraft. That's well, my main point. And maybe I didn't clarify. Starcraft is huge. Yeah, no, it's uh, big. With, with uh, the new expansion pack coming out, it's just going to get even more popular. That game is ridiculous in the competitive scene. And yeah, that's the only reason why I think it'll get even big because StarCraft's already pretty big in like Korea and in the South Asian market. Like they take their shit serious over there. Like, oh, yeah. like it's their NBA. No, it like, is. They're so proud of that shit. There's like um, gangster um, conspiracies going around over there, and I don't know. I've heard some crazy stories, <laughs> but no, I, yeah, I, I, I could. But also, they don't have the you know the nba right they don't have the nfl they don't have mlb over there so that's their thing you know and it's big because you know that's what they're into and that they're watching but if you know is it is it going to be big enough to take over the u.s market or not necessarily take over but just be a part of it. it be a part I of mean, it yeah can you go out to like say the grocery store and, and pick out five people and be like hey you watch some starcraft 2 this weekend Probably no, I, Probably. I don't think that's going to happen. But you know, those same five people, and you're going to be like, "Hey, you watching Big Brother? Hey, you watching the uh, the NBA All Star Game? You watching the, uh, you know, the Yankees play? You're going to find at least one or two or three. People. Yeah, right. Yeah, watching that same stuff. I mean, uh, I don't know. You're going to need something huge to happen. That it is just so overtaking everything. Right. And it generates dollars for that to happen. I just. I don't. Think you don't see it. No. Yeah, if I think they that's start like a, a little niche channel on cable somewhere. Maybe tie into G4 TV or something. Sure, I'll give you that. But to, you know, go CBS or TNT or something like that. I don't think. So. I think that's the the key to this whole this whole thing. And I, I have to agree with LB mostly on this one, especially with two years. I think it's a little too close. I think what you would need to see to have it really be successful is an actual cultural shift. 
um, which takes years, right? I mean, what we're seeing now is our generation, the older dudes that are still playing video games, we don't really play maybe as much as we used to. Um, or if we do, we suck, right? Or we suck more than we did. Um, and we watch these things like Twitch and stuff like that because we like to play those games still, but we're not pro at that level anymore. And our cultural interests are shifting away from maybe, you know, actual sports towards video games. That's what we grew up on. We didn't, you know, maybe we grew up on sports and video games, but that's what we relate to. And that's the cultural shift that's kind of happening. I think that's going to take a while. I think we're going to have to see maybe another generation or two. Um, and maybe we'll see something like that, but it's definitely growing. Uh, and I think that's that, that sort of gap between our generation and the new generation. They're the guys that are actually playing, you know, hardcore and going at it. Um, that we actually have a connection now, you know, we actually have something that we share where we can go out and say, Oh, I love Starcraft. I used to play Starcraft one, you know, or I used to play the shit out of that game. And you're seeing these people play these competitive games and you're actually interested. There's strategy involved. There's a, there's a level of strategy that you can then respect. Uh, and it's interesting to, to watch. And I think, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that maybe that's what they lost with, with Halo. Um, there's only so much strategy that's in an FPS. Obviously, it's capture the flag, shoot him in the face, kill as many as you can, whatever. Um, and there's a lot of skill to that. But when those skills all become very, very equal, it, it almost loses its... It, it's just the same battlefield that you've seen all the time. And the win-loss is kind of less important. And I don't, the level of strategy, I think, goes down. And I think the FPS guys might be on my ass uh, about that. But... That's what I think is happening with the FPS side of things. What do you, why do you guys think Halo has really dipped so much? Uh, do you think there's another reason? Um, LB, what do you think? Honestly, I really, I really don't know. Maybe it's because, you know, it's such a big divide of, between people who like, like Halo 3 and Breach. Now, you had both camps, and unfortunately, MLG is not going to carry two different games. You know they're going to carry either the most recent one or the one that works, and it's just it just never panned out which one is going to be it. I mean, honestly, I I don't know really why. Maybe people are just tired of it, like you said. Maybe they're just used to seeing, you know, an H two. You watch Lockout, you're like, okay, you do set up over in library. You get a guy in the library, you get a guy on BR one, BR three, and blah blah blah, and then you got to try to break it. Well, there's only there's a finite amount of ways you can do that. And when you right. just see it again and again and again, it kind of gets boring. What do you think, Ed? Like, why do you think uh, Halo's uh, taking such a, a hit? Hit. I think the only reason why MLG dropped uh, Halo is obviously people weren't playing it as much, or people weren't watching it as much. Um, why? I, I think you just gotta blame it on the game. Uh, I think Halo Three and Reach weren't as popular as Halo mm-hmm. Two, and Halo 2 when was was when MLG was at its highest point if you would agree. Yeah. It was really popular for FPS. For FPS um I th- I can only blame it on the game. And I'm hoping Halo 4 is more like a Halo 2. But I don't know. I mean Halo might just be watered down now. It's it's lost its appeal kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh but I, I I don't understand it. Yeah, it's I, it's yeah. straight. I'm I mean a little it's confused. Well, I think a lot of it, too, is the FPS sort of community is, like LB was saying, has been fractured. Not just within the two series, but within Call of Duty uh, and other FPSs. It's th- that whole market is everywhere right now. It's, it's spread out, and, and really it's because there was a lot of money to be made um, in FPS. And so everyone made an FPS, and a lot of them became popular. And the genre itself is really sort of fading in its own way as well. Um, and I agree with Tank here. He's saying in chat that that it's really hard to follow an 8v8 sort of or 4v4 sort of scenario. But with StarCraft 2, you get a chess-like match, uh, and it's 1v1. And so you're rooting for one dude. You know, there's a guy that you can get behind. You can say, all right, I love him. I love his style of the way he plays. I like how he uses Zerg, or I like how he uses, you know, Protoss, or whatever. That sort of mentality is a little bit easier, I think, for us to follow as fans uh, than sort of the 4v4 and a lot of what was happening with Halo is you'd have teams that were, you know, 
one team was had these three guys on it one season, then these guys went to another team, and it was like, you know, it got a little, like, ridiculous, I think, after a while. Yeah. And people were sort of like, okay, I, I can't really do this anymore. And a lot of it, and I know I might get flack for this too, but I think a lot of it was the uh, final boss team. That yeah, was. I, I was just about to say that too. Yeah, I think a lot of it was is personality. Is if if a team's playing just the game and you're just watching a video game, that's cool. Uh, but that gets boring very fast. If you have a team of you know, let's say twin brothers that are kick ass at Halo and are undefeatable, that's a little bit more that's that's excitement that's something that you can't just write right i mean that's they want the drama they want something that's you know fresh and new and like oh can they can they actually topple this you know team can they do it can they do it and then after that sort of legacy died off uh sort of the sort of feeling of you know excitement and who's gonna win and it just sort of got all muddled up i mean wouldn't you agree that back then when the two ogre brothers were were doing their thing that was the most exciting time in, in for Halo uh, hit. Would you would not agree? It, it wasn't even just the ogres. It was Walshy, Strong Side. They were, it, it wasn't four individuals. It was the team. It was Final Boss. Everyone knew who Final was. What a uh, Final Boss was. Um, and you didn't really know all the other little teams. Uh, that's how I got into MLG. It was because Final Boss. It, it was like a team that I could root for, like uh, Michael Jordan in basketball. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, they, it was a lot of drama. They were stacked. It was fun back then watching them play, watching them hold a strat, and then watching the other team like completely fail at trying to break that strat. It was entertaining. You don't see that anymore in like Halo Three or Reach. Right. Like that one strat on that one level. If you couldn't hold it, then you're screwed. Like you don't see that anymore in in uh, video games. At least I haven't really seen it. Yeah, at least in an FPS. I mean, that's. I think that's the yeah. problem. Is the FPS has gotten a little stale. Oh, I mean, what do you think, LB? Do you think it's? Do you think Ogre was sort of the pinnacle, and or and we're not going to see it again, or do you think there's hope with with the new Halo? Because I, I believe they're bringing. I would think they're going to try to bring Halo back with Halo Four. Can anyone? Confirm or deny? Uh, it? MLG, yeah, yeah. MLG said that um, uh, their uh, Raleigh uh, or well, anyway, in December, first week of December, they're gonna have some sort of Halo Four um, something, like Whether just like a skirmish exhibition match, right? or an actual Halo Four event. It's debatable, but something MLG will have some sort of Halo Four something on the first week of December, whatever that event is. So what do you think, um, LB? Do you think they got a chance with that then, or do you think this FPS thing is just kind of done? Well, I think I don't think FPS is done. I think you know you hit on it a little bit, and Hops hit on it too in, in uh, chat. Excuse me. Good for that you. Uh, they easily break up teams week to week. I mean, literally, your team could dissipate week to week, and it's it's all based on points, how they go from here and there, and all that shit. If teams stayed together longer i think it would be more interesting like like what hit was saying you're saying can anyone beat final boss can anyone beat this team and eventually it just got to well this week you have maybe final boss playing but then next week two of the players have split up and gone to two other teams right now there are you know three or four other teams out there and I, i think that just fragmented the uh the system too much yeah so if you can get, you know, and everyone, they hate the bad guys or they hate the assholes or maybe you like the assholes, but you need the asshole team and then you need the underdog that maybe comes up. And like you said, it's drama and I think team consistency would be the key to maybe keep like an FPS more, I don't know, more uh, current. Or more yeah, more exciting. Teams. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a pretty good point. I mean, I think really getting something to galvanize the community that's how you bring a community forward. That's how you keep things moving, right? You have to have, you have to be excited about a game, but they also have to be excited about the players that are playing the game. Those are the two things you need um, when you really, I think, when you want to watch an esport. It's like if a guy's really good at a game, that's great, and maybe watching him for his strats or whatever, I can see that. But if a guy's got a great personality and his he's got great skill, that's something you really want to watch. But that goes that's anything. That's any sport. That's any form of entertainment. You don't just want the skill. The skill is great, but the skill plus the attitude um, definitely carries it. And you see that, for, I don't know, maybe this is just 
StarCraft, but I feel like you see that a lot more in StarCraft. And maybe that goes more to Tank's point that it's 1v1, that you can sort of get that is nurtured a little bit more. Um, but that definitely seems to be a staple of the StarCraft community, that everyone knows this one guy. or Like, I know Huck, but I know Huck because I saw him on a couple streams, and I'm not even a huge... Starcraft fan. I don't. I played the game for like twenty minutes and was like, "Man, these Asian kids are kicking my ass." I'm done. Um, <laughs> but I still love to watch it, and that's what's really strange about about specifically Starcraft. It seems to have this sort of way to, to get you interested, even if you don't play the game. Um, which I think Halo had that, and it actually brought in a lot of players. Like, wow, these kids are really cool. It's fun to watch, and maybe I'll try to play the game. And then they kind of fell in love with it. Um, and, and we're kind of starting to see that with LOL now. That seems to be another type of game that's moving forward. Um, free to play, came out of the scene really out of nowhere, copies the, the old Dota model, um, but it's exploding. Now, do any of you guys watch LOL? I personally don't, um, but I know it's gaining a lot of steam really fast. So I was wondering if any of you, do you guys know anything about LOL? Hit, what do you know about LOL? Um... I don't really know much, just people tweeting like live LOL matches and screenshots here and there. I'm assuming it's some sort of like Dota clone of yeah, some sort. It's, Am it's, I it came correct? out of that. It's that same sort of champions versus whatever. Uh, I used to play a lot of Dota. So for me, it's kind of almost weird that I don't watch LOL. Um, but it's League of Legends has that same flavor that that don't had so yeah it comes out of that um but a lot of people are saying that it's really real it's one of those games that's really easy to get into but at the same time hard to master easy to you know easy to pick up hard to master that's the key i think for any video game same with starcraft so you have these wide swings of skill level uh, and that seems to make one of the best i almost say it's the formula for a good uh, esports type of game it seems to be if you were going to compare lol or Dota, or anything to StarCraft, and you say, what, what do these games have that no other game has? Um, I think that's the most important thing. Like, LOL is played on the same map, or has been played on the same map for almost a year. That's, like, unheard of in, in FPS. If you told me that we're going to play Halo tomorrow, and it's going to be that map that I play, but that's the only map we could play on for a year, you'd be like, fuck you, I'm not playing this game. Yeah, that'd be kind of like, That'd really? be, like, insane, but for some reason... People don't care. The map is almost irrelevant in LOL, but it's the settings, it's the way the game's played, and then it's the people. It's the guys that have gotten this skill together that's better than what you can do, and it's interesting to watch. Is there any way to put that... Is there any way to have that in an FPS? Is there any way to get that sort of um, level of skill that's super fun to watch, but, you know, for whatever reason, you can't do it, these kids can. Is, that, is there a way to... Can you guys think of anything that can bring FPS to that level? LB, maybe something. I think you you definitely need a game designed specifically for that. You can't have a game that's going to be wishy washy and they're not real set on it. I think part of the thing with Halo Two is by accident, by design, whatever it was, it was set up to play well competitively. When you start getting into H three and then Reach and then who knows Halo, you know four. If you come out of the gate with maps that are kind of uh, some Frankenstein in between a competitive map and a an open fart around map, I don't think it's going to work. You want something they can just get in there, play with the, with the settings, get it set where it's going to be consistent, where they don't have to tweak it from week to week, right. from month to month to find out, well, this might work or we might have to tweak this. Little tweaks here and there, but significant tweaks, no. It's, it's just, it's got to be it's got to have a lot going for it, and, and it'll, I don't know if, if Halo's going to do it. Can an FPS do it? Yeah, but right. I don't know. we got to find it. Yeah, I, I definitely think you're right there. I think Halo right now is trying to appease an, an enormous market. They need to, they're trying to make everybody happy, the casual players, the hardcore players. And I think when you do something like that, you lose that specific. You can never be 100% like hard. You can't be 100% hardcore. You can't be 100% casual. You're kind of all over the place. And LOL was built specifically in this one way. Um, I think it almost feels like they were built with esports in mind. 
And, and that's another thing we can even talk about. Recently, and th- this was at E3, and I wish I could remember the name of the shooter because it's going to bug me. Uh, I'll try to look it up while we're talking about it. But we saw a lot of games that were developed solely for esports. And this is sort of a new concept that's hitting now. I mean, before, Halo wasn't designed as an esport. Halo became popular because people were like, this is a fun fucking game. We should shoot each other for money, right? I mean, that's where this all, all this stuff kind of comes from. Um, but now you're seeing game development being pushed in that direction on purpose. You're seeing games with esports built in sort of technology that allows you to do commentating and camera work and follow things as they happen. Um, that's, that's a pretty big signal signal that things are well in the esports world. And so do you think that maybe game developers, uh, they know that's where money is. I mean, are they seeing something we don't? Where, what, is the, what is the whole reason, I think, for a game developer uh, to come up and say, we want to be an esports game? I mean, what do you think that, in terms of revenue, what do you think that brings to the table for them, for, for a developer? Uh, hit, what do you think? I mean, like... It makes people buy the game. Right. It makes the uh, life of the game last way longer. Uh, example, Halo 2, it, it, it was really popular for, what, three years yeah, after time. it came out? It could probably have gone longer, really, but yeah, that's that's what I think a game company should be thinking. How can we keep our game relevant for a long period of time? And esports seems like to be that um, solution. It like, also kind of angers me as to why three four three didn't make their game more esports friendly, like the no broadcaster mode and yeah. like little things like that. I. Yeah, if Halo 4 would have done all that stuff, I think it'd be a good esports title, but... They don't... For whatever reason, they didn't do it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I... Maybe they don't see it yet. Maybe Halo 5 will be more esports friendly. We'll see. Right. But no, I think, yeah, it's the best way to make a game relevant, last longer, and make more people buy it, more yeah. money in your pocket. Yeah, and I, and I think they're going along those lines. I think as a revenue stream continual revenue stream. A lot of the esports types of games that are coming out now, they might not have a subscription base on them, but like when you talk of League of Legends, it's a free to play game, but where they make their money are the add-ons and the the extra characters you can buy. And if you can create an esport around that, you you almost guarantee a revenue stream in the sense that if a new character comes out or a new champion comes out that they've got X abilities or whatever, um, they have to buy it, right? To remain competitive in some way. Maybe the abilities don't do more damage or don't do anything specific, but not having that champion or knowing what that champion can do on on the battlefield, let's say, puts you at a pretty great disadvantage. Uh, and so you almost create a revenue um, without even trying. I mean, as long as the pop, as long as the game is popular, as long as the games people are you know actively trying to follow it, you have a guaranteed revenue stream outside of just you know the longevity of the game. You can keep it relevant by adding patches and doing things like this. And I'm wondering, like, going off what you were saying, Hit, why why do you think that a game like Halo 4 at this stage in the game, where I think they have everything to lose, um, I mean, I think this is their biggest release ever. This will kind of be like, you know, does 343 make it? Are they really the, you know, the second coming of Halo? Or are they going to fall front? Why wouldn't they support th- this area gaming anymore? It, it's got to be because... They just don't think esports is there. It, it, that's got to be the only thing, because I, I don't know how they don't see StarCraft being so popular or League of Legends being so popular, Call of Duty being so popular. Um, I I don't I can't believe that they don't see it. So they must not think it's it's relevant yet. Uh, I'd be curious to see how Halo Five turns out if they'll have if they start supporting it more. Like I know that MLG and Halo and three four three have been working together on Halo Four. Yeah, like, you would think collaborated, so. right? At least that's a good a step in the right direction. But they should have added the broadcaster mode. They should have added a little bit more. Uh, maybe they don't know how to do that stuff because this is their first legit game, or they just don't believe in the esports scene. But it doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> no, I mean, something that made them in, I mean, Halo 2 was a great game, so that can't be denied. And it's almost like the chicken before the egg situation. I don't know what made what popular. Halo 2 was a great game regardless of MLG. But in a way, you could probably say that MLG helped Halo 2 get as big as it did. I, I mean, I, it's really hard to say. You know what I mean? I yeah. don't know. 
it, it's a tough call, but I, I really think without MLG, you wouldn't have that sort of die hard, you know, let's play Halo 2 until the next, you know, six years scenario. At, at that time, I, I was watching MLG on TV and I mean, Halo 2 on TV and it was because of MLG. So, yeah, I, yeah, definitely. I could see that. Yeah. I mean, and like Hit said, too, the other the other flip of the coin is that MLG created the the big divide in the community, which was the casual player and the hardcore player. And those two can never really play together anymore. Um, which there's something to be said about that too. I mean, maybe Halo's decision is to just be as, you know, lofty or, you know, kind of like, they just don't want to take a side, right? They don't want to be, we support MLG and we will do anything they say. They just say, Hey, we're, we just make the game. You guys do what you can with the game. And maybe that's a good direction for them to take. Maybe that's, a smart move for them so that they don't have to sort of put their eggs in, in one basket. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Um, but before, before we go, I would like to say I was looking this up and the one game that we, that the shooter that I guess is coming out from Ubisoft, it's called shoot mania. That was the name of the game. It has a horrible name, but yeah. It's terrible, right? Shoot Mania. Yeah. It's awful game. That's it bad. got a lot of buzz from E3, didn't it? it? It did. And the reason was because it was specifically made with this in mind. So it comes standard with full broadcasting ability, detachable camera. You can point the camera anywhere. You can go behind a character, see sort of a third person view of what he's doing above. The whole battlefield is sort of your playground if you're the broadcaster. At the same time, you can have, you know, just like in an actual MLG game, or I should even say an MLB game, um, a point system right on top, zero to whatever, all that stuff is built in inherently in the game engine. So we're seeing a clear shift towards this type of gameplay. Um, whether or not that's going to be the FPS genre or even the MMO genre for a while, believe it or not, World of Warcraft was on the circuit for MLG. A lot of people don't remember that. Their arena stuff. Uh, was there too. So there's definitely a market for all this stuff. And like Hit said, fighting games have, for whatever reason, gone ape shit lately. Like, where where have I been? Where I've always been pretty popular, they? but Am I they've nuts? definitely surged. They surged crazy. Definitely surged. Because I, I feel like back in the day when, when Halo 2 was big, I think it was Super Smash Brothers that was on the circuit. And yeah. I remember going to MLG Chicago, and it was packed. Like, the Halo room was packed. And then in like a tiny little corner, there was like six people playing Super Smash Brothers. Like, you know, I mean, I'm being a little vague. I don't really remember, but it was a very small amount of people. Um, and recently, I think, it, is it the Evo? Is that the name of the, the yeah, tournament? Evo. Evo's been around for a while, They've though. been around for a while, but how many viewers did they have? Didn't we Didn't we get a number on... Was, was it like, something like 9,000? Ni- I thought it was no, nine, like 90,000. 90, yeah, which is pretty big. 900,000? Really? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Two, Nine million. Two million people <laughs> per second. But I mean, it's clearly all these games, no matter what genre, has clearly been growing. The mass is getting bigger. Uh, and and it's and NLG is here to stay. So, I mean, it's, it's really an interesting topic for me. Um, like I said, I was a huge fan. I've sort of, it's kind of, I've, maybe it's the game for me, but I've waned a little bit on MLG. Um, but I totally respect what they're doing. And I would love to see it grow even more. I think it helps us. You know, as, as vidcasters and stuff gives us something to talk about. And I think ultimately, even though there is, a like Hit said, a, a divide in the community, I think you need pros. I think you need someone out there to look at and say, oh, they're good. I want to get good, too. I don't think that's ever a bad thing for a game. Uh, and it certainly keeps the longevity of the game going. And for a guy like me or a guy like LB or a guy like Hit, I think it ultimately also creates content for us. Um, if the game is going to last a while and people are going to follow it, then the developer is going to have to spend some money on that game and keep that content flowing. So I think it helps us as consumers as well. Um, but yeah, so we'll have to see LB. Now that we're done talking about MLG. Oh God. How do we feel about the releases this week? We're, we're shifting gears fast cause we're running out of time. Uh, well, it's is there pretty much good? the same as any other week. You've got uh, version 112 of a sports game. You've got. Uh, <laughs> is there anything on the list this week that's good? Anything? Uh, I don't think there is. Is there? No. Does, does Paul does Paul's have anything on there that he wants to talk about? Because I, I was is, looking at this, I I saw nothing today. I was like, Jesus Christ. A football 13? No, is that is that not a popular it, franchise? Well, no. N- NCAA is this. So NCAA 13. Is, is out 
for the uh, PS3 and the Xbox 360. So if you really want to play another football game, which what is wrong with you? Move on. Do something else with your time. Watch actual football. How about that? <laughs> Watch actual. That should be our topic next week is, you know, will, will uh, sports video games ever be an MLG event that people want to watch? Or will people just say, why don't we just watch real sports? Because I wonder if you could ever have like a Madden no. competition where people would actually be interested. They'd be like, why am I fucking watching Madden right now? You could actually just go watch football. Um, so that's, yeah. And I think The Sims 18 is the other release this week. Like, literally, <laughs> what the fuck is with The Sims, dude? Let it go. Uh, well, you're going to buy The Sims, right? Well, that is The Sims 3, and I, I think The uh, Sims Facebook game also got released, too. So, I mean... Ugh, Facebook games. Fuck. <laughs> you know, I just, I'm just looking at this stuff, and I'm looking for something to be like, oh, wow, you know what? Yeah, I want to give that a shot. Zoom is my words. No, Facebook I don't want to try Zoom. going to be the downfall of gaming. They really are. <laughs> no, because they'll be on this new platform that, that we were just talking about. Right. <laughs> You'll have them in your living room. It'll be super exciting. Um, well, there is one game on there that I would oh, like boy. to talk about. We saw Quantum Conundrum uh, at E3. It's actually pretty cool. If, if you guys have never played Portal, I think everyone's played Portal, right? Who hasn't played Portal? Oh, right? yeah. You guys play, you play Portal LB or no? Yes, I played Portal. Okay. Remember? We played you together. You on me when we were no, playing. No, technically you cheated you on me. You left me alone. Technically you cheated on me. So I cheated on you. <laughs> That's the type of relationship we have. It's hurtful. It's painful. Wow. Um, so Quantum Conundrum, it's first going to be released on the PC. It's Square Enix produced. It's a first person puzzle game. So it's base, it's, it's basically portal. It's a little bit more cartoony, but it's basically portal. Uh, it's going to be on all the platforms. You're it, it's the setting is a little, I don't know, cheesy, I guess you're like this 12 year old boy who solves puzzles to find his missing uncle who's gone, you know, missing in this giant mansion. So it's almost got that like Luigi's mansion feel to it, but in a portal setting, but it actually was a lot of fun. And let me just say the game is 15 bucks. So like, it's one of those games where just like portal, cause portal is cheap. I'd go out there and give it a shot. No, that'll be no. It, it looks kind of cool. I'm looking at the screenshots right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 15, 15 bucks. bucks. Come on. What's wrong with you people? Meh. I'll be, maybe we can play and then I can. No, play I with some... no, 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 I'll be, no, no. Oh. The Are day we, I get this game over? is the day you get Trials Evolution. How about that? I never oh. get Trials. <laughs> How about That's you cool. buy me Trials and I'll buy you Quantum Conundrum and then we'll just call it even. <laughs> That's all we need to do. Anyway, uh, next week, I don't know what our topic's going to be. We're trying. We're still trying to get the people from Gunner on the show. I really want to get them on the show, so I'm going to harass them by talking about them right now to make them feel like they have to. Look, oh, don't in, forget to mention the, uh, the tool to play promotion with that. Yeah, 20% off for the entire month of July if you are a member of tool to play So if you're not a member of tool to play go ahead and sign up right now. If you're under the age of 25, you will instantly be deleted. There is no point in signing up. Why would you want to hang out with a bunch of old guys? It's pretty fucked up, so don't do that. But if you are a member, you get 20% off for the entire week of a uh, week. Try a month. Let's go with that. Of July. Sign up, have fun, meet some old people, play some video games. Um, with that, LB. Do we, have, do we have any site news? No, we don't. No. We don't ever have site news. Nothing happens. We don't have site news. We don't. We don't. We do. Um, LAN. <clears throat> I can't we confirm nor deny the LAN. <laughs> All right. All right. Let me just say that it is a strong possibility that there will be a LAN the weekend of November 9th <laughs> in Chicago. So if you have nothing to do in that week, don't book it. Keep it open. It's possible you may hear a land announcement this week, November 9th, Chicago. Be there. Um, <laughs> Look for the Kickstarter page. <laughs> yeah, we're going to kickstart it. With me, as always, my lovely friend, LB. Can you give him a little hit on your tweets there so they know where to bug you? You can find my extremists on Twitter at LBSUTKE. That was the best. <laughs> outro i've ever fucking heard from you you're, i don't even think can i, I, say I this, can top that can i say this right now your gunners make you a better person oh, wow. you're a better human being with them on if that's not a plug for gunners i don't know what is you're wow. a better human being hit where can they find you and your 
awesome gunners. And my gunners? Yeah. Your gunners. Uh, at Twitter at i6hitman and on my Twitch page, uh, twitch.tv forward slash i6hitman. Sweet. You can find me at the Twitters. Dude, I rock. D-O-O-D. I. R. No CK. Um, that will be episode 23. We'll see you guys next week. Hopefully we get some people from Gunners here or maybe Triton. I don't know. We're trying to get people on the show now. That's our new thing. Because we want to talk to industry people so that we can make ourselves feel better about our purchases. That's the goal, right? Yep. I don't yep. feel like I made a bad purchase anymore. <laughs> Bullshit. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Fuck all of you. Goodbye. Take it easy. Peace. Peace.